Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're looking at some 3D prints that I've found really useful in the metalworking shop and hopefully they give you some ideas of how a 3D printer can really fit into your workflow. See, the new generation of 3D printers is so easy. You don't have to be a nerd. You don't have to know all about modeling to really get some awesome stuff. And if you wanna learn more about that, stick around at the end of the video. I'll go over the three printers that I have ranging from 200 to $2,000 and give an idea of what makes sense in different situations. Now, the first model we're looking at here is a tube coping jig. This is to put a notch in tubing to fit it together with other tube when you're building any kind of a frame like that. Now I designed this and uploaded my first video about these little jigs over five years ago and I created a model that you can go in and just enter a few different parameters and it'll set it up for your size of tubing, the angle you want and make it just right. And then you slide it over your tubing and trace it out and you can cut that out with a combination of a bandsaw and a die grinder or whatever you have in your shop and it'll give you a perfect fit. The next one is really practical and useful. It's a cap for your argon regulator to keep the ceiling surfaces and threads from getting damaged and keep debris out of it when they're not in use or you're traveling. I modeled this up and linked it in the description, but it wasn't my original idea. I first saw this made by Alex Jordan, AM Custom Fab. If you haven't checked out his YouTube channel, really good guy with some awesome welding content on there. Now the next one is a forming die. This is actually a dimple die that is in a square shape. I have a set of round dimple dies that I can use to put dimples in material, and they're made of hardened steel but uh, I wanted to try out a 3D printed dimple die and I made my first one on a video a few years ago out of some really expensive uh, engineering filament. This is out of some more affordable PET G with carbon fiber reinforcement and I wanna see what that can hold up to. Let's try it out on some different material thicknesses. So I'm going to test this out on mild steel, assuming that if it'll handle this, it'll handle aluminum. And I'm starting with some 18 gauge and using the dimple die press that I built in a previous video. I've really liked this little press. Now, whenever I put dimples in, the material curls up and then flattens back out. And that uh, seemed to work really well here. But as I looked at it, the punch actually took a bit of a beating there and didn't hold up with the stock settings and the dimple wasn't uh, fully pressed in. So I increased the wall thickness and the infill to give a little bit more strength on the print. And I think there are some other things that I could do to further increase the strength. I might look into that. If that's something you'd be interested in seeing a future video just about, let me know in the comments. But uh, here, once again, it curls up, flattens out like you'd expect, and the punch is in much better condition. So this PET-G with carbon fiber seems to be holding up just fine here on 18 gauge. Let's move to some 16 gauge material and see how that works. Now 16 gauge is about as thick as I'd go with steel and put a dimple in, and that worked really well also. And the punch is showing a little bit of wear, um, but it's not bad. And the next one is for custom work holding, and that is custom vice jaws. And I tried something really cool with this one. I actually put TPU, which is like a soft rubber-like uh, filament, inside the actual jaw printed in place. And I think this is really, really cool. In fact, my newest 3D printer, the reason that I chose this one is that it can switch between these materials. Most AMS or automatic material changing systems can't work with TPU or change back and forth between them. But with the dual extruder heads, I was able to extrude um, both TPU and a hard material. This is PET-G with carbon fiber reinforcement uh, together. And I was thinking about using that for sealing surfaces. And then I thought, you know, it could be really useful for vice jaws. So this is a bit of an experiment for me. Now I designed these to fit on this little vice that I got from Fireball Tool that I keep on my welding table. And they fit really well. And you could make any shape that you want, especially with 3D scanning. But I just uh, ran a simple test here to grab some one and a quarter inch tubing. And it gripped down really nice. I mean, it holds it in place really well, much better than the regular plastic ones. And if I force it to slip, which took a lot more effort than I expected, it, it didn't mar up the surface at all. So pretty cool. Now, one of the most obvious applications for 3D printed stuff in the weld shop is simply for storage. So here is a tungsten storage tube. I didn't design this one. I just found the model online. I'll put a link in the description. Um, but you can just put your tungsten electrodes in here 
thread the cap on and they're good to go. And you could actually, you know, scale this up for all sorts of different rod holders. Maybe they attach to PVC pipes or things like that. Um, but there's a lot of different storage applications. Another one is a little tray that I made for my most commonly used TIG consumables with magnets on the back that I keep right by my uh, welding machine here. And it's been so handy to have those right there. I've been using this one for several years. Now, another little storage or bracket idea is this holder for my tungsten grinder. And this just clips right onto my welding fixture table. My tungsten grinder can slide in. Now, if you don't have my exact table and tungsten grinder, the model's probably not gonna be useful for you. But if you happen to, feel free to shoot me an email and I'll send it to you. I'll show you another one that I designed up that's been pretty useful. This exact model probably won't be applicable in your shop, but it might give you some ideas of how it's really nice to be able to make your own custom tooling. This is a support for a lathe chuck. See, I have chucks that are quick changed. I'm constantly going between three jaw, four jaw on a collet chuck. And the last thing I wanna do is drop that heavy thing down on my ways. And so I can just slide this in underneath and then open up the cam locks and the chuck sits right on top so I can slide it out and get it out of the way without doing any damage. Now the last thing I'm going to show you is a little um, gauge and this is just an example of different measurement tools but these are a really cool way to be able to figure out what the outside corner radius is on something. Now they're in metric and uh, they read out in the diameter. It's just a model that I found but I think it's one of the best ones out there and there are seriously hundreds of others out there. Um, that you can just download and print without having to know how to model things up or do that more complicated CAD work. Now, if the thought of purchasing a printer or using one is overwhelming to you, either because you're not familiar with CAD or you've had a bad experience with some years ago, uh, let me assure you this new generation couldn't be more user-friendly. You just load in filament, you click to load a model, and it works 99% of the time just right out of the box. Now the printers I have range from $200 to $2,000. That's a big range and nobody wants to overspend, but you also don't want to underbuy and not have the capability that you need. So since I have experience with these three, I'm going to just walk you through what they're the right fit for. Now the $200 printer is the Bamboo Labs A1 Mini. I bought this for my kids to use and I've actually ended up using it a lot because the quality of prints you get, the speed it runs at, how quiet it is, everything thing is extremely impressive. It's blown my mind that you can get it for that price. And um, unless you're printing large things or you want to use more advanced engineering materials, it works really, really good. As far as materials go, I'd stick with PLA or PETG on a small printer like this, which can give you good properties, certainly good enough for any of the tools that we looked at here today. But if you want to use some of the more advanced engineering materials, I'd look for something with an enclosed chamber. And that brings us to mine that comes in around $1,000, which is the X1 Carbon. This has been a workhorse for a couple of years for me. They sent it out a few years ago to use for projects on the channel. And I've been blown away at the quality of this. You can run multicolor prints as a hardened steel nozzle to use carbon fiber reinforced materials and it uh, just plain works and that's the thing that is most valuable to me so i'd highly recommend it but if that thousand dollar price tag is giving you some indigestion there's actually one that's really similar to this that right now is about half the price it's the p1s this one is the sweet spot that I would recommend to 90% of people. Now, if you go up to the top end of their range, there's the H2D that they just sent out for me to use uh, for some projects. And the reason I was so interested in this one is it has dual extruders. So you can switch between hard materials and print in place with this soft TPU, like I did on these vice jaws or for ceiling surfaces or things like that. That's an extremely unique capability that you won't have with an auto material changing system and I, I really love it for that also it has a large build volume it has better temperature control in the volume to print more advanced materials and do a really good job it's fast um, their models are constantly changing but that kind of gives you an idea from $200 to $2,000 you really can't go wrong um, across the board with those bamboo labs printers at least from my experience 
Hey, thanks a ton for tuning in. If you enjoyed this or learned something, let me know by hitting that thumbs up below and be sure to check the description for links to some of these models. We'll see you next time.